Happy Earth Day from all of us at Seneca County Cornell Cooperative Extension. To celebrate the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, we aim to bring forth activities, projects, and presentations that will inspire you to take action and make Earth Day last all year long. Topics include climate change, recycling, plant science, land and wildlife conservation, composting, and much more. We encourage you to celebrate Earth Day, to participate in an activity, or to share your own Earth Day projects with us. If you have any questions or wish to share your project, please contact us at seneca at cornell.edu. Thank you. Climate change over time can be measured in a variety of ways. Scientists have drilled thousands of feet into the Antarctic ice to test the air that was trapped as bubbles when falling snow was compressed to form the ice. Carbon dioxide levels have gone up and down in cycles of about 100,000 years. Scientists also have a way to measure the temperature at those times. They found that when the CO2 levels are high, the temperature goes up and at no time have the CO2 levels been as high as they are now. Another way is by looking at the rings of trees. The following activity from the Paleontological Research Institution in Ithaca is called Climate and a Tree Stump. It shows what you can learn about the environment and climate from tree rings. You can do these activities outdoors if you can find a tree stump with visible tree ring. Or you can do it indoors using this picture, which can also be printed off from the attached resource sheet. Each year a tree grows a new ring under its bark as it gets thicker and grows taller. If you find a tree stump, you can tell how old the tree was when it was cut down by counting the rings. But the rings tell us much more than the tree's age. They can also tell us something about the climate while the tree was growing. The thickness of a tree ring depends on the climate conditions during the summer. Trees grow more during warm, wet summers, making wider rings, and less during cold, dry summers, making narrower rings. Tree rings can also tell stories about extraordinary events that happened during the tree's life that were big enough to have affected the tree's growth. For example, fires can leave scars in a tree's rings. Scientists who study tree rings are called dendrochronologists. Dendro meaning trees, chronology meaning timeline. Use this picture of a tree cookie, a slice through a tree, to answer the following questions. How many years old was the tree when it was cut? Let's say that this tree was cut this year. Find the ring that grew during the year you were born. Was it a cool, dry year or a warm, wet year? How do you know? In what year of growth was the climate the coolest and driest? In what year of growth was the climate the warmest and wettest? Now let's move on to making a tree ring timeline. To do this with the picture of the tree cookie, fold the tree cookie picture in half, making sure to go through the center of the picture, and place it on another sheet of paper. Or, as is done here, place a sheet of paper over the tree cookie picture. To do this with a tree stump outdoors, or with a real tree cookie, place a sheet of paper on top of the stump so that one edge of the paper goes out from the center of the stump towards the outside of the stump. With a pencil, place a small tick mark on the paper to mark the position of each tree ring. Remove the paper. You now have a series of tick marks. Extend these lines so they are about three quarters of an inch long. With a ruler, draw a line connecting each tick mark. It should look similar to this picture. Label each year and you have now made a timeline. Scientists can learn about past climate from studying tree rings. While tree rings alone cannot tell the whole story of climate, knowing about what types of environments different trees lived in helped to put the rest of the story together. When trees live near the edge of their habitat range, they are more susceptible to changes in temperature and rainfall. When multiple trees from multiple habitats across the globe are studied, climate reconstructions from trees tell an amazing story of the history of the Earth's climate. Thank you to the Paleontological Research Institution for making their teacher-friendly guide to climate change available online. For more information about climate change, please contact them or your local Cornell Cooperative Extension office. Hi 
everyone. My name is Rachel Williams. I'm the 4-H program leader with Seneca County Cornell Cooperative Extension. And I'm really excited to be with you here today to share a lesson, an activity that often our Seneca Green teens may do with youth and adults from across the county and sometimes across the state. And before we get started, I do have to ask you a couple of questions. So how many of you recycle at home? If you do, raise your hand. Great. And if you're a student, how many of you recycle at school? If you do, please raise your hand. Good to see and good to hear. And if you are someone who works outside of the home, usually, maybe not right now, but usually, when you are at your place of employment, how many of you recycle at work? If you do, please raise your hand. That's great. So nice to know that so many people recycle and hopefully are also first reducing and reusing. But if you don't or aren't quite sure what to recycle or what to reduce or what to reuse, we're going to talk about that today. But before we get to that, we are going to read a book. It's a children's story, but it's great for all ages. It's, it's fun, it's engaging, I'm sure you'll love it. The title of it is Michael Recycle. Michael Recycle is written by Ellie Bethel and it's illustrated by Alexandra Colombo. There once was a town called Aberdeen Rhymey where garbage was left to grow rotten and slimy. It never smelled fresh. The air was all hazy, but the people did nothing. They got rather lazy. And then something happened that none could explain. It wasn't a bird and it wasn't a plane. A green creped crusader soared through the air with a calendar hat on top of his hair. He bounced off the earth with a thump and a bump and then landed headfirst in the town garbage dump. He brushed off his suit as he jumped to his feet and grinned at the townsfolk who he'd come to meet. I'm Michael Recycle and I have a plan, but I need your help, everyone to a man. The sky and the river are smelly and brown. Soon 50 foot bugs will take over your town. Check out, it's a recycling superhero. You've got to recycle, you've got to act soon before all your trash reaches up to the moon. Then crushing a can, he gave them a wink and vanished from sight before they could blink. Miss Moosecatch exclaimed to her friend, Mr. Crew, did you happen to hear what that boy said to do? Clean up and recycle. How hard can it be? A green and clean town would be lovely to see. It sure would. They recycled their paper, their plastic and aluminum cans, and even old junk like used pots and pans. They also began the Be Greener campaign. They grew their own kumquats and saved up the rain in rain barrels. So proud was the town of their green transformation. They threw a great party, a grand celebration. They covered the town in green toilet paper, then rolled it back up to use again later. You may think that's yucky, but these folks don't agree. In Aberdeen Rhymey, recycling is key. It sounds like that was a reuse plan. When Michael came back to visit the town, he didn't despair, get angry or frown, for everything looked so clean and brand new. The sky and the river were again a bright blue. Look at our town, it gleams and it glitters. Now nothing's wasted and nobody litters. To Michael Recycle, the green caped crusader, our super green hero, the planet's new savior.
But Michael Recycle was nowhere around. He'd already moved on to help the next town. So if you should see a green silhouette streaking the skies, please don't get upset. The noises you hear, that clunk and that thunk. It's just our friend Michael recycling old junk. And Michael Recycle has a lot of go green tips, like recycle, recycle, recycle. Turn it off, like turn off your lights, turn off your water. Recharge it, please, so use rechargeable batteries. Don't be a drip, so don't let your water drip. Make sure you keep control over how your faucet is, is working and not dripping and leaking. Quick and clean, so that means take quick showers, quick hand washing. No running when brushing, that means don't let your water run while you're brushing your teeth. Take a stroll, so that means more walks, maybe more bike rides than driving in cars. No paper trails, so reducing the amount of paper we use. So reusing paper, scrap paper, things like that. And instead of using paper towels, maybe using cloth. Trees, please, so trees are friends of the earth. So plant trees, take care of trees, grow trees. Can it means don't litter. Make sure things go where they need to go. We're gonna get to that in a second. And pile up. So that's a great way to talk about composting. So make a compost pile. So many great ideas that Michael Recycle has about going green. Particularly today, like I said before, we're going to talk about reducing, reusing, and recycling. So I have quite a few different um, sorting stations back here behind me. Before we do that though, I just wanna make sure that everybody knows what recycles. So at Seneca County Cornell Crop Third Extension, I mentioned that um, we actually have a, a group, a club where teens can be teachers about recycling, um, reusing, reducing, and also sustainable energy. And that is called Seneca Green. So you could get involved with that group if you are in seventh grade or up. Uh, if there's adults that are interested in helping out with this group, we definitely could seek some more volunteers also. That group actually um, helps reinforce and support our efforts to do recycling education in the county. We are uh, fortunate to be the recycle educators for Seneca County and we have a number of different things that we have going on to help us with that. We have a website, www.senecarecycles.org, where really everything you need to know about recycling can be found for the county and beyond. Uh, we have actually some great resources. We have a fabulous magnet that we give out at a number of events and localities around, and they're also available at our office when it's open. And this magnet actually tells you what recycles in different places. So we're gonna talk about that in a minute. And then we also have a beautiful table or chart that gives you everything you need to know about recycling. So just to make sure everybody knows, glass recycles. Newspapers, magazines, paper in general recycles. Metal, aluminum cans, foil, things like that recycle. All these things recycle in your blue bin, which you can have eight of at your home, or you can have uh, gallon toters. Plastic. Anything that's plastic that has a number one through seven on the bottom of it or on its container, usually associated with a triangle, recycles. Now, if it's styrofoam, it does not recycle here in Seneca County. So even if it has that symbol, that triangle and one of those numbers, it still doesn't recycle here in Seneca County. Corrugated cardboard, so your cardboard boxes, they need to be broken down and they can go right in your blue bin. Box board, so box board is a little bit thinner than cardboard but heavier than paper so it's like your cereal boxes those can go in your blue bin and then any other paper office paper junk mail things like that they can all go in your blue bin even if they're colored or if they're shiny they can still go in your blue bin and then gable top containers which i'll show you but that's like an orange juice container red juice container so it has that kind of looks like a roof they also so let's try a sorting activity now so you'll see behind me here i have a can, a small can that says trash. Next to it, I have a bowl that says compost. Next to that, I have a blue bin, hopefully you recognize this, that says recycle. And then I have a reusable grocery bag that says return to store. 
So what happened was I actually was outside, I went for a little walk and I found this big bag of garbage or what people might think is garbage. So I thought, you know what? I took a peek and I was like, this does not, a lot of this does not need to go in the trash. And I would rather try to not do that with it. So I found in there some plastic, some plastic wraps, napkin holders, uh, napkin uh, wrapper, uh, water bottle wrapper, bread wrapper, grocery bag, plastic grocery bag, I should say, and a Ziploc, clean and dry. So actually, these plastic items, anything like this, can be recycled. It cannot go in my blue bin, though. I do have the chance, though, to take it back to the store and deposit it right at the store. So I'm really lucky to have that opportunity. And it will get recycled and turned into something new. I took a little bit more look in here. And oh my goodness, there's a lot of plastic in here. I found a plastic milk jug. And that has a triangle with the number two inside of it. So I know that I can recycle, right? I remember that. And then I found, oh, I found another plastic container with a number five on the bottom inside the triangle. I found out one through seven numbers they can recycle. Now, I have to tell you, some of those things I might be able to reuse. So the plastic milk jug, I might be able to turn into a fun arts and craft project, maybe a bird feeder, feeder, feeder even. And the container, I might be able to recycle. This is a perfect example of a reuse container. So this container has a number five on the bottom inside the triangle, but I'm able to clean this up and I can reuse this over and over again to store my food in. That's pretty exciting. Once I'm all done with it, once it's not in good shape any longer, I would then recycle it in my blue bin though. Let's see, what else? Oh. Oh my goodness, there's so many things in this. Oh, I remember, remember that we talked about how corrugated cardboard could be recycled. Now pizza boxes are one of these. And if they're pretty clean inside, they sure can go in your recycle bin. That's awesome. Let's see, what else? Oh, I know, didn't we say all glass recycles? So I'm pretty excited. I've got some glass containers that I can recycle. They're gonna go in my blue bin as well. Filling it right up. And then I remember that I heard, when we talked a minute ago about what can recycle, that uh, aluminum cans can recycle. So I have an aluminum can and that aluminum foil, clean and dry, can recycle. So pretty excited. I can put that in my blue bin. And then, oh yes, yeah, so we did say gable top containers. So a container like this, an orange juice or juice container that has a little, what sort of roof on it, gable top container. I can recycle this in my blue bin. It's all cleaned out and dry and good to go. I think we said box board can recycle. It sure can. So I might be able to do some reuse craft projects with my box board as I could with maybe some of those other things that I put on recycle bin. If I'm not going to, I can definitely recycle. Look at that even a McDonald's French fry container or wrapper. In my blue bin. Let's see, what else do I have here? Oh, an egg carton. Not a styrofoam one, but one made of compostable material. These are awesome. I could totally reuse this to start some seeds if I wanted to, they're perfect for that. I could also use it for some arts and crafts projects or storing some things. I have some friends who've chosen to, to decorate these and turn them into maybe a jewelry storage, bead storage, something of the sort. Once I'm all done with this and it's really not in that great of shape, I can kind of tear it up a little bit and it can go right in my compost. That's a perfect thing to put in with your compost. It'll break down so nicely. Help with that piling up. Let's see. Oh, I did find a couple things in my bag that I know I have to put in the trash can. Remember we just said that Styrofoam does not recycle in Seneca County. And even though I see a triangle on the bottom, I know that in Seneca County, I do have to put my styrofoam in my trash can. So you know what? Now that I know that, I just am really gonna try to avoid using styrofoam. If I have the choice, if I'm picking the material to use, I'm not going to use styrofoam. Let's see, oh I know, we said paper, right? So paper 
can definitely recycle. It can also be reused if it's blank on one side. And there's so many things, my goodness. Newspaper can be used to cover a space to do some messy work, do an arts and crafts project, do some gardening, things of sorts. I can use this also for bedding for animals if it's not shiny and if it's uh, less of a colored product. So that's really nice, just shred it up and use it for bedding. A lot of these things also can compost. So it really depends on the material. So you have that option, compost or recycle your paper. Oh, another box board item, a paper towel tube. One of my coworkers just recently did a great activity with paper towel and toilet paper tubes where it also can be used for seed starting. So that would be a great reuse option for paper towel or toilet paper tubes. Also, we could break down, we could um, rip it up a bit, put it in our compost, or we could put it in the blue bin to recycle because it's box board. So glad that I'm not putting very much in my trash can. So I did see that there um, are some other things that we could return to a store. So we have aluminum cans with a five cent deposit. I'm gonna take that back to my store with my plastics and I'm gonna get my money back for that one. And a plastic water bottle with a five cent return. I'm also going to take that back to my store. I'm gonna put that right in there with my items that go back to my store when I take my reusable grocery bag to my store to do my shopping. So the paper towel, not in bad shape, nothing bad happened to it, just somebody happened to use a paper towel instead of a cloth to maybe dry their hands, dry their dishes, whatever. So the thing about this paper towel is it could go in the trash, but it doesn't need to. It could go in the compost as well. And it cannot go in our blue bin. So you know what I'm gonna do? Why don't I reuse it? Turn it into something else. Break it down for the garden, help things grow. I'm gonna put it right in my compost. Last thing I found in my garbage bag, a plastic straw. So I could wash this over and over again and reuse it till it doesn't, isn't usable any longer. I could wash it and reuse it for maybe a craft project, some sort of fun activity with my kids. When it's not usable anymore though, I will not be able to put it in my blue bin. I will not be able to compost it. I will actually have to throw a plastic straw into the trash because this sort of plastic is too small to go through the equipment, the machines that are used for recycling at recycling facilities. So unfortunately, I had to put that in my trash. But I only have three things in my trash can. Everything else has ended up in my compost, my blue bin for recycling, or my, re my reusable grocery bag to take back to the store. So I'm pretty excited, I hope you are too. We really helped prevent things from going into the landfill, prevented things from going into the trash, and figure out ways to reuse them by recycling, by reducing. And so one way we can reduce as well as, as use our recycling and our reuse efforts is to just use less, right? So reuse items like re use real dishes, real silverware. So instead of plastic silverware, paper dishes, things like that, where we use them over and over again, that will help reduce, as well as buying things in bulk, in bulk quantities. So let's just review and see how we did. Kind of as a takeaway, how many of you will continue to recycle at home or start recycling more at home, start reducing more, start reusing more at home? If that's the case for you, raise your hand. Great. And at school, will you, how many of you will continue to recycle? And if you're not recycling yet, Maybe you can talk to your teachers, maybe you can talk to your principal, maybe you can talk to your superintendent about how you can recycle more, reduce in school, and reuse in school. If you'd like to be a part of that effort, that action, raise your hand. Great. And at the workplace, outside of the home, when you're back to it, or if you are there right now, how many of you think that you might try to continue to recycle or recycle, reduce, and reuse more? You could definitely, I'm sure, talk to your supervisor, your employer about that. I'm sure they'd be excited to hear about opportunities to help our planet by reducing, reusing, and recycling. If that's the case for you, raise your hand. Great. So for more information about recycling efforts in Seneca County, please visit us at www.senecarecycles.org or you can contact us at our office, Seneca County Cornell Cooperative Extension, located on Main Street in Waterloo. We serve the whole county and we'll be very happy to help you with your reducing, reusing, and recycling efforts. Have a great day.
Eco-friendly and sustainable gardening with natives is easy and beneficial. Planting natives benefits native wildlife, native pollinators, and us. Native plants are those that were naturally found in a particular area before European settlement. They occur naturally in a region in which they evolved and are adapted to local climate and soil conditions and co-evolved with the other species in the system. They include trees, shrubs, grasses, and flowers native to a certain area. Native plants adapted to the local environment help reduce air pollution, help prevent erosion and runoff, and help filter pollutants out of the water cycle. Once established, many native plants require less maintenance and resources, need minimal watering beyond normal rainfall, need less upkeep and pruning, and require little to no fertilizer or pesticides. Native plants are the foundation of and support a region's biodiversity. They provide essential food sources and shelter for wildlife. They provide pollen, nectar, and seeds for pollinators like bees, birds, butterflies, bats, and beneficial insects. Native plants have developed their own defenses against many pests and diseases, and the native wildlife they attract are also a natural pest control. The list of native pollinators include native bees, butterflies, birds, bats, and other insects and animals. Some scientists estimate that one out of every three bites of food exists because of pollinators. More than 80% of the world's plants need pollinators to survive, including many that provide the food we eat. Insects and other animal pollinators are vital to the production of healthy crops for food, fibers, edible oils, medicines, and other products. Bees are the main pollinators for fruits and vegetables. There are over 4,000 species of bees native to North America and 450 native to New York State. Native bees are up to three times more efficient pollinators than honeybees, and most native bees are solitary and nest underground in twigs and debris or in old dead trees. Did you know that the most common avian pollinator is a hummingbird? Without native plants and the insects that co-evolve with them, local birds cannot survive. You can benefit birds and other wildlife by simply selecting native plants when you make gardening and landscaping decisions. You can help pollinators by incorporating native trees, shrubs, and flowers in your garden or farm plan. You can provide resources in your backyard or even on your porch or windowsill. Choose a variety of colorful plants that bloom across all seasons and provide clean water for native birds and pollinators. You can provide shelter by leaving dead tree trunks or snags as part of your landscape or build bee houses, birdhouses, or bat boxes. Eliminate pesticides and include plants that attract beneficial insects. Allow plants like dandelions and clover to flower in your lawn. And once you've created a wildlife friendly habitat, you can certify your yard with the National Wildlife Federation. Regional guides provide lists of native plants for your local area. To make native wildflower seed balls, use these instructions or copy the example in the following video.
You can make bee houses using dried pine or fir posts and drilling holes a quarter to three eighth inches in diameter, three to five inches deep, and at least three quarter inches apart. Or you can use a bundle of paper straws or hollow sticks sealed at one end. Bees prefer dark colored homes, so consider charring the front lightly. Mount these so that the tunnels are horizontal and make sure they are in a warm location with southern exposure and protected from rain and predators. These are some more examples of bee houses using untreated scrap lumber. Join the movement to plant natives and garden for pollinators. The art of gardening is not only a form of relaxation, but also of creating change. With every haven we create, we become leaders in the movement to create a world that is nourishing to the very creatures that nourish us too. This video is put together thanks to resources from the New York State Department of Conservation, USDA Natural Resource Conservation Service, U.S. Forest Service, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, National Wildlife Federation, the Pollinator Partnership, National Audubon Society, Xerces Society, Finger Lakes Native Plant Society, University of Maryland Extension, and the Old Farmer's Almond.
Composting is an easy way to divert food scraps from your garbage can and put them to good use in your yard and garden. Composting is based on balancing the amount of nitrogen and carbon to create perfect conditions for decomposition. You need two parts of nitrogen, otherwise known as greens, to one part of carbon, otherwise known as browns, in order for your compost pile to heat up and break down into organic matter. You can have a small compost container on the counter near your sink to make it easier to throw compostable food scraps into as you have them. You can use an old coffee can, a recycled plastic container like from Cool Whip, or even a plastic food container. Then, as the container starts to fill up, it can be taken outside to either start an outdoor compost bin, or you can dig a hole in your flower or veggie garden and bury the contents in a different location each time you take it out, where it will break down and nourish the soil. If you choose to have a large outdoor compost pile, that pile will need to have a 2 to 1 ratio of green materials to brown materials and be kept damp to keep the composting process going. Turning the pile so that different parts are exposed and then different parts are covered up also helps to speed up the process. Grass clippings and weeds and other garden refuse can also be added as part of your green materials. But for your small indoor container, just start with some browns that you add to the bottom of your container. Ripped up newspaper or a brown paper bag, cardboard, wood chips, or dry leaves. Sawdust, straw, and hay are also good browns. These can help keep the small container from smelling and can be added on top of any food scraps once they are added to help keep the smell down if your jar starts getting stinky before you take it outdoors. If you want to not to have to dump the container so often, smell can also be controlled with a small carbon filter the kind that are used in cat litter boxes and fish aquariums, cut to fit the inside of the container and glued in place. Several small holes punched in the top allow air to circulate through the filter and control the odors. Add the food scraps as you produce them. Veggie and fruit scraps, coffee grounds, tea bags, and eggshells. See how much you can add to your compost instead of the garbage can. If you're unsure if something can be composted, make it a lesson for the kids and have them research the answer and find out why it can or can't be composted. Here are just a couple examples of things that you should not add to your compost, dairy products and meat. So start composting now and divert those food scraps out of the landfill and into your gardens. Thank you for learning with us today. Please join us through the rest of the week as we explore local food, sustainability, the natural world, and more. Follow us on social media at CCE Seneca and Seneca County 4-H NY. Visit our website, SenecaCountyCCE.org, for more suggestions on how you can begin to make a difference or continue to do so. Happy Earth Day! Thank you for learning with us today. Please